Hey, say say hi to the video. Hi, video. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of my Wedding Bell series. So I made a video in the past called Wedding Etiquette Faux Pas, and this is going to be a whole new list of faux pas, except this time it's going to be guest faux pas. If you've never been to a wedding before, you don't really know what it takes to be a good wedding guest. And if you've never planned a wedding before, you really don't know the stress that happens behind the scenes. The first faux pas is adding uninvited guests to the RSVP card. If you're a guest and you receive a wedding invitation, Take a look at the names that it says on the envelope. Does it say John Smith and Jane Doe? If so, then those are the two people that are invited, and you shouldn't RSVP for any more than two people. If it says John Doe and family, that's when things can get a little bit dicey and confusing. When in doubt, if you have children, if you don't know they're invited or not, ask the bride and groom. It doesn't hurt, and it's probably going to save them a headache in the end. If you get a plus one, that means your envelope is going to say Jane Smith and guest. That means that you can bring one person of your choosing to the wedding with you. If you don't have and guests, then sorry, that means you don't get a plus one. So don't add people to the RSVP card. Faux pas number two, forgetting to RSVP entirely. Usually on RSVP cards, it comes with a due date that you should RSVP by. This is because the bride and groom's vendors need final headcounts by a certain day before the wedding. And unfortunately, if you RSVP past this due date, then tough luck, you're not going to be able to come because chances are the bride and groom have already handed in their final numbers to their vendors. And once that happens, there's really no wiggle room. So if you can't answer the wedding invitation right away, if you can't plan that far in advance, that's fine, but at least write the due date on your calendar. And keep in mind, for RSVPs that you have to mail back, if you put it in the mail on the RSVP due date, they're not going to receive it until a few days later. So when possible, try and get it in before the due date, just to put the bride and groom's minds at ease. Faux pas number three, bringing uninvited guests or children with no notice at all. Let's say, for example, that children aren't invited to this particular wedding, which happens sometimes and you put down two on the RSVP card. You put down yourself and your wife or your significant other or whoever it may be that you would be attending the wedding with. And then the wedding day comes along and you show up with your three kids. Guess what? The bride and groom had not accounted for any children in the first place because children were not invited. Second of all, they weren't accounted for on the RSVP card. Third of all, they're not going to have a seat during the reception. And fourth of all, they're not going to have any food. So this just causes either the bride or groom or the bridal party or family members or the venue coordinators to run around trying to accommodate these extra people that they didn't know about. Another example is RSVP no, but deciding last minute, oh, you know what, I ended up being free. Maybe I'll just show up. Don't do that either. This is a large event that a couple has been spending months and months and months and months and months planning for. And there's a reason, there's a reason that there's a due date, there's a reason that you need to let them know whether you're coming or not, because if you can't, then they're not going to have a seat for you, they're not going to have food for you, same things I said earlier. Which kind of leads into my fourth faux pas, which is RSVPing yes and then not showing up. I can completely understand emergency situations, they happen, there's nothing you can do about them, that's okay. But if you RSVP'd yes, then that means that the bride and groom are now paying for your plate, they're paying for your chair, they're paying for your place at the reception, they're paying the per person cost of you being there. So when you don't show up, the couple is eating the cost and it's basically hundreds of dollars wasted. But if you absolutely can't show up for whatever reason after RSVPing yes, then please, like, as soon as you know, let the bride and groom know, or at least someone close to the bride and groom so they're not being bombarded days before the wedding or even the day of the wedding. Just letting someone know at least lets them know that you cared and that you wish you could have been there, but something came up. Because if the couple just hears nothing from you, then, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like that's a little bit of a slap in the face because they spent all this money for you to be there, and then you just don't show up and don't even say why or that you weren't coming or anything. So just communication is good. Just be good communicators. <laughs> Faux pas number five, using your phone during the ceremony. And this is especially important if the couple has specifically asked for an unplugged ceremony. Peter and I have opted for an unplugged ceremony because I've seen so many articles and professional photographers give examples of how everyone using their phones or taking pictures with their own cameras can really, really ruin certain shots. For example, I saw pictures where everyone was sticking their phones and their cameras and their iPads out to the aisle, even going so far as to stepping into the aisle itself, and the groom had to 
peer around all of these guests to even see his bride walking down the aisle. We're in the technological age and I, I totally get that, but frankly, if I'm paying thousands of dollars for professional photographers and videographers to capture my wedding, guaranteed those photos are going to be better than any photos that a guest takes on their phone. That's just the way it is. And honestly, like, I want to see our guests' faces during that moment. I want to stand up there and look out to the crowd and see all of our friends and families and all of our loved ones and all of their faces. I don't want to see them all looking through a screen and experiencing the moment through a screen because we experience so much of life that way these days. So I think that everyone can stand to have 30 minutes tops without their phones. And obviously this especially goes for not even paying attention to the ceremony at all. Like you shouldn't be on your phone playing games or texting people or taking phone calls. If you do that, then you might as well not be watching the ceremony. You might as well excuse yourself from the area and take care of your business. But really, at, when you're witnessing a wedding ceremony, you should be present and you should be taking the moment in and, you know, remember that you've been asked to be there because you're important to the couple. Faux pas number six, taking pictures with flash. So, back on the camera thing, we're okay with people taking pictures during the reception after the first dance has happened, but for anyone who is allowing cameras and pictures to be taken by guests, please, for the love of God, do not use flash because there's a lot of things that photographers can do to save a photo. If guests get in the way, or if there's an unfavorable thing in the background, anything of that kind. But if you are using flash at the same time that a photographer is trying to capture a key moment, there's no saving that image. There's nothing that you can do if the flash completely takes over that whole image. During key moments especially, like during the first kiss, when the groom sees the bride walking down the aisle, during the first dance, like all of these key moments, don't use flash. Faux pas number seven, which I already kind of went over, is basically just stepping into the aisle during the ceremony. That is the sacred space. <laughs> that is the space that the bridal party and the bride is going to walk down, and that space needs to remain free of everyone else. And for this reason, that's why a lot of people put up some type of tool or some type of barrier on the inner sides of the rows of chairs so that people don't step out into the aisle to see the bride when she's coming in. Yeah, so basically the gist of that one is stay in your lane. Faux pas number eight is talking during toasts and speeches. When someone is giving a speech, it's just generally rude to talk over them and talk through them and not pay attention. I know toasts and speeches are boring, I completely agree with you, but just don't do it because chances are that the people giving the speeches are probably nervous as it is and you're not going to make any better by not paying attention or by talking. My plan is to make sure everyone has their food so they can start eating and enjoy their food while listening to a few speeches. And by a few, I mean like a few. Like I want hardly any speeches. And I figure that will solve the talking during speeches problem because you're not supposed to talk with your mouths full. Faux pas number nine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Finally, the last one I have is number nine, which is wearing white as a guest. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that I personally don't really care if anyone else wears white. No one else is going to mistake someone else for the bride unless they show up in a bridal gown, in which case, like, everyone else would just be like, Why are they wearing a bridal gown? Is she crazy? So whatever, wear whatever you feel the most comfortable and most beautiful in. And also, I just want to throw this other like fun fact in here, which is where the tradition of wearing white even came from in the first place. So many people think that it comes from some religious thing which symbolizes purity and you know how you're not supposed to wear white for your second or third or fourth or fifth marriage because you're not pure anymore and you know. It, it has nothing to do with being a virgin or being pure or any of that. It actually started in the Victorian era when Queen Victoria decided to make a fashion statement by wearing white to her wedding. Because prior to this, most people didn't own anything that was white because it simply wasn't easy to keep clean and it was basically seen as a status symbol to own white clothing. So the general population just wore their Sunday best or whatever you want to call it. They just wore their best clothes for their wedding, whether it be navy or brown or taupe or whatever other color other than white because most people didn't own white. So basically Queen Victoria made it a fashion statement and that's when it started becoming a trend and then somewhere along the line religion got their claws into it and turned it into something to do with purity and being a virgin and all that stuff. But yeah, fun facts, fun facts, things that I learned while wedding planning. <laughs> so yeah,
yeah, that is pretty much all of the wedding guest faux pas that I can think of. At least any of the ones that would bother me on some level. I'm sure there are more. I'm sure there are women out there who would be bothered by a lot more. Again, as I've seen on wedding forums. Yeah, so if you are going to be a guest at any point in the near future, just remember these tips and you'll be the best guest ever. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you come back for more of my Wedding Bell series. Bye!